So, now let me get into the uh, teleological arguments. Um, teleological argument is the argument from design and all that entails. So the fine-tuning argument, the aspect that you are addressing, is just part of the general teleological argument. There's also the um, there's a the cosmological aspect, there's the natural aspect, and there's the biological aspect of the teleological argument. Now, I want to say that um, there's something here that I think you're, you're completely ignoring, and I'm going to go back to the fine-tuning argument, and this to me is... I don't know why you didn't even address this. The fine-tuning argument does not begin and end on the macro level. What I mean is, um, yes, there's the fine-tuning aspects on the macro level. And I'm not even going to be begin to pretend that I can show you how it could be different. I'm going to assume that I can't. There may be somebody out there who can, who is, you know, maybe there has been some physicists who can show that how it could be different. I'm going to leave that alone. I'll give that to you. That's no problem. But the fine-tuning argument doesn't begin and end at that level. Let's bring it down a notch to uh, the needs statement for a hosp hospitable planet in a, in a solar system. When you look at our position, our solar system's position in the Milky Way, we're in a very good spot. There, we're in between sp the spiral arms if we were in the arms themselves, there's so much action going on there, our solar system could not take it. I mean, there's like supernova blowing up. There's there's all kinds of stuff going on. We are in a, a really good position where we're at in the Milky Way, in our solar system. And when you bring it down from there, let's look at the need statement for a hospitable planet. First, it can't be gaseous. It's got to be solid. Um, we got to be in the right temperature range from the sun. So uh, liquid water can do its thing. Um, we also need a moon to help stabilize uh, the environment. I mean, I'm sure you probably know some of the facts that um, about the Earth that are extremely slim. This is part of the fine-tuning argument. It's not on the macro level. It's down to our level. Now, here's what's really... This kind of boggles me that you don't even address this. None of these things have to be the way they are at all. There's nothing saying that. Our position... In the Milky Way doesn't have to be that way. Um, our position near the sun doesn't have to be that way. The Earth does not have to be uh, terrestrial. This could have been a gaseous planet. There's nothing saying these things have to line up. That's where the fine-tuning ar argument changes. Maybe at the macro level, I can't demonstrate it could be different, but most certainly on the level we're on, I can definitely show you how it could have been different. It doesn't have to be this way. And this is the general fine-tuning argument. It's not, you know what I mean, This it's, it's a cumulative argument. It's not one aspect. These are all these things added together that definitely make one reflect, you know, about our position. It's my phone, of course. So anyways, it's a cumulative argument. It's not just one aspect. It can't be won or lost on one assertion. So another thing I want to address is um, I don't see what the problem is reflecting, even on the macro level, what is the problem reflecting how things could be different? I don't think that's faulty reflection at all because if, if you're going to say that's faulty reflection then you might as well say anybody who reflects on existence as opposed to not existing, that's faulty reflection as well. I mean, is, is, is an atheist going to tell that person, well, of course you exist. Uh, the universe was bound to produce you. And I mean, even Einstein reflected on things that were in similar regards. He said that um, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that we can comprehend it. I mean, are you going to say, well, of course you can comprehend it. You know, the universe produced your mind. No, I mean, there's still a wonder to that. It, I think it's a legitimate consideration for reflection. It's not something that you should shout down, you know, and even more so, I would say it'd be like, um, if a world famous architect decided to, and I'm not saying God is an architect, I'm not getting in all that, just try to follow what I'm saying. If a world famous architect decided to 
build a home inside of a mountain, like deep inside of a mountain. And you're in there after the fact, and you're, you're looking around, you're walking around taking a tour of this thing. You start looking at the uh, structure of this home, how there's reinforced, like, pillars or whatever, holding this, holding the rock above, you know, keeping, keeping the mountain from caving in on you. You see things that are twice, two or three times as reinforced as a normal house, whatever. You see there's a machine pumping in oxygen. You see all these things happening. Of course you're going to wonder, like, you know, if that wasn't there, you know, this whole house would crumble. This whole, this whole structure wouldn't exist. Or if that oxygen wasn't being pumped in here, I wouldn't be able to breathe. And, of course, if those things weren't there, the house wouldn't be inside of the mountain, you know. But it still bears reflecting on, you know. It, it, you can't just rule that out and jump on people because they're reflecting on it. I think it's very legitimate. You know, if things were different, we wouldn't be here. That's definitely a true statement. And there are plenty of atheists who agree with that. There's, uh, you know, they look at the fine-tuning of the universe. It's not like only theists say that. There's atheists cosmologists who say that as well not including Victor Stenger but I mean it's just a fact it's a true statement if the constants were different we wouldn't be here and, it, and it's they're extremely fine tuned on a macro level and um, so that's a true statement I'm not going to get into how probable it is that they'd be different but it's still true nonetheless so I guess that's it and I also want to make a recommendation. I don't drink alcohol, but I really like these things. These are called Izzy's. And I think someone else on YouTube was recommending them. I don't, I don't remember who it was. But what's cool about them is that they are, it's 100%, it's fruit juice, real fruit juice. Instead of diluting it with water, they dilute it with uh, sparkling water. It's basically a healthy soda. And you, when you read on the back, it says that uh, each bottle delivers two servings of fruit based on the USDA 2005 dietary guidelines. So I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to wait on your response. And it's always a pleasure talking to you. And I hope that anybody who's watching this video, definitely, especially theists, take the time to um, check out Das American Atheist, a.k.a. James' videos. And the um, only thing I would say is uh, make sure you have a good argument. Make sure you know what you're talking about. And other than that, he will engage you. He's a very fair guy, so I will see you later, buddy.